have you ever wondered how many ways you can break your Linux? I have. Okay, so we all know that RMRF can absolutely nuke your installation of Linux, but how many other ways can you break your Linux? Now, I tested everything that I'm about to talk about on a Linux Mint VM on Hyper-V on Windows, sadly, because I can't be bothered to set up a virtual machine on Linux. Okay, firstly, a very surprisingly easy way to harm your system is simply by changing the system time. Now, I hear you saying, what does that have to do with anything, and doesn't my time sync automatically? Well, yes, and you do have to disable that, and consequently, this is still pretty easy to fix, but this does completely mess up your system. This is because a lot of encryption actually relies on time. Things like SSL, HTTPS, and a few other things, I think, rely on time for encryption, so if it's not accurate, it's not going to work. Now, understanding why this is the case is very confusing and takes a lot of thought and brain power, but if you want to get better at this, you should check out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker. They have thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and more. They're a learning app designed to be uniquely effective. Brilliant helps you build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, something that you probably do a lot, because guess what? You're probably either a programmer or a Linux user or both, and your problem solving skills are your best asset. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics with exciting and bite-sized lessons, you'll also be learning how to be a better thinker, which is going to help you down the line when your installation of Arch inevitably breaks. But if you just want to code, Brilliant has programming courses, math courses, and courses on how things work, literally. To try out everything Brilliant has to offer for free, visit brilliant.org slash Oscar or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Disabling and changing the time is something that you can do on your own Linux, but please don't try this at home. Maybe it doesn't work, or maybe you can't get it back for some reason, and then you're kind of cooked. Anyways, you can disable the NTP daemon like this. This is the network time protocol daemon that just keeps track of your system time. I think it's down to like the nanosecond, actually. It's like pretty insane. Now, the only other thing I want to mention here is the page that pops up on Firefox when you disable the network time protocol and try and access a site over something like HTTPS that uses, you know, encryption. The one really weird thing uh, that it doesn't do, especially for Firefox, is it doesn't mention Linux. It mentions uh, Windows and Mac, if I recall, but it doesn't mention Linux. Now, if you're really curious, you can check out this page, which is the error page that you get on Firefox. Back to the main topic, this should fix itself uh, as long as you don't disable NTP, and even if you do disable NTP, you can just start it again with systemd. Now, for a more unique way of destroying your system, you can actually delete systemd targets. And if you're not on systemd, you're probably running OpenRC. Uh, and if you're on OpenRC, you probably have these things called run levels. And uh, it's the same thing as systemd targets, as far as I'm aware. Now, what are systemd targets and what do they do? Well, when your computer starts up, you don't just want every process starting at the same time, right? So what you do is you have these groups that start some processes at a certain point during the boot and some at another point. There are a few different labels for these processes, and I think you can create your own custom labels, but these groups are what systemd calls targets. And as I mentioned, and as far as I know, they're pretty synonymous with OpenRC run levels. So when you delete these and reboot, everything should explode because you can't start your system, right? Now, while you watch this, I should note that I'm deleting the systemd system directories and lib and etc entirely. So to be frank, we're really just nuking systemd as a whole. It's still there on the operating system. Uh, just all of the files for it are gone. Now, originally I thought that this was only going to affect the startup and reboot and shut down stuff, right? That would make sense uh, because that's the only time that systemd is used, right? Actually, no, and I should have known this, it's used like everywhere all the time. Uh, even when you type shutdown, systemd is used in that command, so you can't shut down the computer manually. So I tried shutting down the virtual machine itself, and apparently Hyper-V doesn't just pull the plug on the virtual machine, it tries to shut it down normally. Yeah, I, I literally could not close the VM. So if you know why this happens, please let me know, because I'm, I'm truly very interested. But again, SysD clearly plays a large role in everything on your system, which I kind of should have expected. Also, while we're here, uh, just RMRF doesn't actually do anything. You need the no preserve root argument to actually nuke your whole system uh, from the root. And even then, I, I would recommend using sudo if you really want to go all the way, because I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of files that you can't delete. But once you add that flag and look at what's happening, everything just implodes. Nothing seems to be out of order initially. That is, until you start trying to run simple commands. And when you click to your taskbar, or when you do anything, uh, things just disappear. I would also like to know why this happens. Uh, I'm guessing it's something to do with the display server, maybe? I don't know. You can try and swap to a TTY, but nothing's going to happen. Uh, from there, once I can't get into a, a TTY, I kind of just give up on a system. So I rebooted the, the system, and naturally, as you might expect, I entered into grub rescue mode. Now, I did try a few things to get out of grub rescue mode, but 
nothing that I tried worked uh, within like the hour that I spent trying to fix it, nothing worked. And again, the point of this video was to see if I could nuke my system, not see if I can fix it. But if you wanna see that, let me know. But again, if you couldn't already tell, we just launched a nuclear attack on our system and oh, it worked. And there's almost no chance that we're getting anything back, at least not easily. And by the way, if it wasn't implied, I just sit here for six hours and reinstall a Linux Mint VM. So if you like what I'm doing, Please subscribe. Next is a fork bomb. You've probably seen this little monstrosity floating around on the internet or some forum. Now, when I ran this, I was expecting everything to just freeze. Uh, the point of a fork bomb, at least this fork bomb, is just to kind of implode your system temporarily. Well, the way this fork bomb works is by spawning a bunch of user processes. Uh, I'll put a link to a really helpful guide that I found on how it actually works uh, somewhere down in the description, so check there. But the problem with user processes is that there's actually a few different ways to limit them, some of which I'm sure that Linux Mint and probably most distros utilize out of the box. Things like ulimit or limits.com for things like PAM, which stands for Pluggable Authentication Modules. I just had to check my script there. It's a very fancy thing apparently, but apparently it also uh, can limit user processes. So what actually ended up happening was nothing. Uh, about a quarter second after I ran that command, processes just stopped spawning, as you can see here. Now, I did try and change ulimit and limits.conf, but I never got that to work. I also tried some stuff with PAM, and that didn't work either. Either way, due to the nature of how this fork bomb works, I don't think that this would permanently damage your system. Okay, next is the slow death, and that is deleting your package manager. Now, this is kind of interesting, especially for me, since I do a lot of software development. If you are a software developer or you've ever programmed in your life before, you know how many bug fixes and little security issues pop up on software and you know how quickly those are fixed and how many updates need to get rolled out to fix those right well when you delete your package manager that kind of breaks doesn't it this is actually kind of a pain to do i had to use dpackage to uninstall apt uh now dpackage is still on the system obviously i could go delete the files that uh dpackage uses but apt is the thing that manages your packages and dpackage just handles them Anyways, this doesn't have much of an effect at first, obviously, uh, because your software is still there, right? The only thing that's gone is your package manager. You can't uh, use app anymore. You can't do anything like that. And you could still totally install software with curl, git, um, or wget, just you know, anything, right? But over time, as I mentioned at the start of this section, things will start breaking, uh, right? You're going to have security vulnerabilities that slowly creep into your system because somebody finds them and then exploits them and then they get patched, but you're not getting those patches. So you're still running with all those exploits on your system. Now, for instance, I have 1,163 patches in installed on Arch, and there are constant updates and bug fixes uh, and patches being pushed to those packages and uh, those pieces of software. And if I don't get those updates, um, I'm kind of cooked. Now the actual question that I want to answer now is the following. Can you always repair your system? Now while I was researching for this video, I realized that this is an absolutely mammoth question and I'm not going to try and answer the whole thing, but let's try and answer the ways that we've broken our Linux. Okay, so for system D, yes, if you can get those files back before you have to do anything drastic and as long as your power doesn't cut out, you're probably good, right? Now RMRF, I'm 90... 80% confident that you might be able to get some of your data back with data recovery software. So maybe if you got lucky. Okay, fork bomb, not permanent. Time, definitely fixable. Please don't try it on your own computer though. Now for your package manager, this is interesting. As I mentioned, you can still install software without a package ma manager through uh, curl, wget, uh, git, or just you know download the software and manually install it yourself, right? But I don't know if you could install apt this way. I'm sure you could, right? It, it, it's just another piece of software. Uh, it's just a really important piece of software that we nuked from our system, but you should be able to, right? But what have you broken on your Linux? I know that I've locked myself out of my Linux almost three times now, I think. Uh, don't ask how that happened, but let me know down in the comments. Peace.